Hello, Patriots, and welcome back to the Patriot Dad channel, where we can discuss current events and modern issues, all while keeping it as real as possible. Today, we're continuing our reaction to the CNN town hall with Kamala Harris from October 23rd. This is part two. So let's get this pulled up and let's get back into it, shall we? I just had to guess she's a Democrat. What do you think? Let me introduce you to uh, Eric Swenson. He runs a service desk for an IT company in uh, Conshaw Hawk in Pennsylvania. He's registered as a libertarian, describes himself as an independent. He says he's undecided. Eric? Thank you, Anderson. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, Eric. So my question is... Thank Anderson for being here? ...is concerning groceries. Grocery yeah. prices have gone up uh, quite a bit in the last four years. Yeah. And yeah, thanks. some people blame former President Trump. Some people blame President Biden. Who would you say is correct... And what would you do to bring prices down for Americans? Thank you, Eric. And you're absolutely right. You know it. I know it. I think most Americans know it. Price of groceries is still too high. And we need to address it. In a and how are you going to do that without giving away free shit? number of ways. One of my aspects of doing what we need to do to bring down the cost of living for working people and the middle class in America is to address the issue of grocery prices. Part of my background and how I come to it is probably a new approach grounded in a lot of my experiences as a former attorney general, where I took on price gouging. And m part of my plan is to create a new approach that is the first time that we will have a national ban on price gouging. Where does she think the price gouging is happening? Where along the supply chain are we going to punish? Are you going to punish the farmers that are barely making it? Are you going to punish the middlemen that are buying the milk, the eggs, the grain? Are you going to punish the processing facilities that are processing the meat and the eggs and all the other things? Are you going to go after the big food and pharmaceutical companies like the grocery stores? Do you know what the margins are like? Most grocery stores are not even profitable without selling shelf space. What are you talking about? What price gouging? Be specific. Which is companies taking advantage of the desperation and need of the American consumer. And or they're dealing with the cost of inflation and having to pay their workers more, either because of increased minimum wage, thanks California, increased regulations like cage-free rules for chickens, increased transportation and energy costs. What? Where in that is the price gouging? Please and jacking up prices without any consequence or accountability. So that is one way. But to your point, Eric, there, you know, there are a number of issues that we need to address in terms of bringing down the cost of living. It includes what we need is a really a new approach that I bring to the, the issue of affordable housing. Oh, communism. That's your new approach? Including, for example, rent. And again, I bring to it my experience, knowing what has been happening in terms of how corporations have been buying up blocks of property. Oh, and who's enabling that? The Fed. Lending money to companies like BlackRock so that they can buy up your properties so that you will own nothing and be happy. Pretty sure that uh, is not good for anyone. To diminish competition and then rents get jacked up and addressing that. Rents also go up because inflation has been outrageous. Both in terms of making sure that there is a consequence and accountability for that, but also investing in people's dreams of home ownership. You know, knowing oh, here's, that here's for the too free long, stuff. frankly, both administrations, I mean, both administrations and both parties, Democrats and Republicans, haven't done enough to deal with the issue of housing. And we need... It's not the government's problem to fix. It's the government's job to get out of the way so developers can fix it. A, pr a new approach that includes working with the private sector. I say that as a, as a, as a developed public service. The fascist. Working with the private sector to cut through the red tape, working with home builders, working with... When private companies and government team up to screw you, it won't end well. Developers to create tax incentives so that we can create more housing yeah. supply and bring down the price. L let me just ask you about price gouging. I looked at your plan. Uh, you talk about going after price gougers, and I'm quoting from the plan, on essential goods during emergencies or times of crisis. I get that. How does that help, though, someone like Eric with prices that for years the grocery prices has just been high? Well, first of all, Anderson, as you know, and obviously CNN has been covering extensively uh, what has been happening in the state of Georgia, North Carolina. 
Oh, so now we're talking specifically about disasters. That kind of price gouging is the direct result of supply and demand. During an emergency, when the trucks aren't rolling, supply is very low. Demand gets very high because people want to be prepared. You combine very high demand with very low supply, what do you expect is going to happen? The stores increase the cost of these products because they have no idea when they're going to get them back in stock. If they're going to sell out their entire inventory of the store and it could be six months before they can get products back on the shelves, they've got to be able to pay their mortgages or their leases for the next six freaking months. You people don't understand basic economics. Supply and demand is as basic as it gets and she doesn't get it and she's just trying to convince you that the big evil companies are bad and okay. Guys, she literally treats you like you're intellectually deficient. I'll just say it that way. So I don't get myself in trouble by calling you guys a bunch of words that I can't say. Carolina, Florida, mm. it's a real issue. I, I was attorney general of California. I was the top law enforcement officer of the biggest state in the country. I took this issue on because it affects a lot of people. And I'm not going to apologize for the fact that we need to actually deal with accountability when these not all in fact most don't but when companies are taking advantage of the desperation and the need of the american people we saw it actually during the pandemic as well yes when supply was very low and demand was very high where because of supply chain issues we there was a, a reduction of supply and then they would inflate the price of everyday necessities because they didn't know when they were going to come back not to mention, by the way, again, Donald Trump should be here tonight to talk with you and answer your questions. He's not. He refused to come. But understand that part of his to plan do. is to put in place a national sales tax of at least 20 percent on everyday goods. And, and if that means getting rid of the income tax, good. Necessities. And that by economist estimates, independent economists would cost you as the American consumer and taxpayer an additional $4,000 a year. And how much would I save having no income tax on overtime? Oh, that already paid for it. I don't even need to keep going. But literally, like I said, today, the 24th of October, he was talking about wanting to abolish the income tax and fund the government with tariffs entirely. How much money would that save you if you had no federal income tax? I bet you it's more than 4,000 bucks. Uh, I want you to meet Carol Nakanoff, a uh, political science professor at Swarthmore College. She's oh, a registered God. Democrat who says she's leaning toward voting for you. Has yet Does anyone, wanna, anyone actually think this lady has not decided yet? Look at her. Jesus. Look at her. She's a professor at a college. She, she's a Democrat. Yet to make her final decision. Carol? Hi, Carol. Thank Good you. Good evening. Uh, thank Good you evening. for visiting us in Delaware County, um, Vice President Harris. My question is this. If you could accomplish only one major policy goal that required congressional action, what would it be? Which, by the way, folks, is almost all of them. And why? Well, there's not just one. I have to be honest with you, Carol. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to happen, but let's let's I think that maybe part of this point that I how I think about it is we've got to get past this era of politics and partisan politics what so monarchy this girl is so dumb slowing down what we need to do in terms of progress in our oh the government the the machinations of government the legislative branch just slows things down too much maybe we should just have an executive branch that has ultimate authority and i can be the head of it right kamala country and that means working across the aisle I've done that before. We did it around whether it be what we were able to accomplish with the bipartisan infrastructure deal or some of the work that we have done in terms of dealing with gun safety. But we've got to work across the aisle. And it is my commitment to work with Democrats, with Republicans, with independents to deal with a number of issues, whether it be what we need to do in terms of housing and creating legislation that creates incentives for that, what we need to do to reinstate the freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have that is not the federal government's job ma'am have her government tell her what to do whether it be what we need to do to actually invest in a substantial way in the industries of the future in american-based manufacturing in american-based industries where american workers and union workers 
have those jobs. And uh, how do the people in the Iowa plant for John Deere feel about that? Because under your administration, they are already talking about leaving, taking those manufacturing jobs to Mexico. How about those union jobs, Kamala? How about those? American manufacturing? You're talking about Central and South American manufacturing, not the United States. Shame on you. In a way that is good paying jobs that gives people the dignity they deserve. Look, All of those areas I plan on working across the aisle and with Congress, including the issue of immigration, which we've got to fix. <laughs> what? Lady, you were in charge of the border for three and a half years, and it is an unmitigated disaster. Why would I trust you with the border? Let me ask you, you've talked about codifying Roe v. Wade. That would obviously require... 60 votes in in the senate a, a majority of, of the house that's a big that's a big leap you don't we don't have that yet if that's not possible to codify it in the house we did he just identify as a democrat i mean we all know but i'm just saying like cnn are they just identifying as democrat now they're just openly admitting it that's cool good job good job being honest with everybody what do you do i think we need to take a look at the filibuster to be honest with you but the, the reality of it is this Let's talk about how we got here. When Why is it that whenever they can't get their way, they go crying and whining and they talk about it getting rid of the filibuster? Every damn time, these politicians. <sighs> Donald Trump was president. He hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court. As does any president that gets to nominate somebody to the Supreme Court. They, they handpick them. That's, that's normal. It, it's not his fault that he got to pick three of them and you're sad about it with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did as he intended. And now in 20 states, we have Trump abortion bans that include punishing healthcare providers, doctors and nurses in Texas. Do you know they provide for prison for life? For murdering the unborn? Pretty based. For a healthcare provider? For doing the job that they believe is in the best interest of their patient? When does the unborn child get to be represented as a patient, ma'am? The Democrat position right now is pretty much openly up to the point of birth. They are not a life, which is psychotic. If the baby can survive outside of the womb on its own viably, how can murder be the right choice? Any, anybody? J uh, laws? Uh, Trump uh, abortion uh, bans? Uh, some that make no exception even for rape or incest? And why is murdering the child the right answer to the violence against the mother? So more violence is your answer to violence? What are your Democrat cities suck? One of the areas I special in as a pro specialized in as a prosecutor was crimes against women and children. The idea you would tell a survivor- Does that include Willie's ex? Survivor of a violation to their body that they have no right to make a decision about what happens to their body next? They did have the right to choose. And the greater majority of them are choosing to sleep with the person that they're with. Yes, there are exceptions. I'm obviously not talking about those. Just shut up already. I can hear it in the comments. But when a woman intentionally sleeps with a guy and then regrets it, murdering the child is not the answer. She needs to take accountability and responsibility for the poor decision she made. Or here's a crazy idea. Stop sleeping with everybody that will sleep with you. There's consequences to that. This is what's happening in our country. You all may have heard the stories. Women have died. Women have died because of these laws. And the and millions of children have died with Roe v. Wade in place. Millions. Suffering, I have to say, Anderson, traveling. For example, I, again, I was with Liz Cheney this week. She is unapologetically pro-life and will also tell you that she doesn't agree with what's been happening. I, I find that many people I've met. And I don't know anyone that I personally know that gives a flying F what Liz Cheney thinks. Who are pro-life have said to me, you know, I didn't intend that this would happen. I, would, I didn't intend that women who are suffering a miscarriage would develop sepsis, as has happened many times. I didn't intend that women would die. I didn't intend that there would now be restrictions on access to in vitro fertilization. I didn't intend that there would be an effort to limit access to contraception. So, you know, this is probably one. Of oh, you know what? Uh, OK, contraception. They're talking about the morning after pill or abortion for the purpose of birth control. Oh, that's that's neat. That's that's a really neat phrasing there. Gross. One of the most fundamental freedoms. 
to not sleep with everybody. Yeah, that that's your freedom. Good job. That we as Americans could imagine, which is the freedom to literally make decisions about your own body. It's also the babies. You're making decisions for their body. And on some issues, I think we've got to agree that partisanship should be put aside. And I'll close with this point. I know it is possible because when you look at the midterms, in so-called red states and so-called blue states, when this issue of freedom was on the ballot, the Amer It disgusts me that she keeps referring to that as freedom. You are murdering the unborn. American people voted for yeah. freedom. Oh, part two, guys. What a doozy. I don't know what your thoughts are so far. I'm not obviously very impressed with her performance so far. Her explanations are kind of eh. Like, I, I don't really know what everyone's thoughts are on this so far. I don't really believe that the people in the audience are undecided. Obviously, it's a very friendly room to Kamala. I understand that uh, Donald didn't want to be there, and that's fine. I completely support it. Kamala avoided Fox. Trump is avoiding CNN. Makes sense. Trump is going on Joe Rogan. Kamala is running away from Joe Rogan. That makes sense. I just don't think she's a very personable person. And I don't really agree with most of her viewpoints. Like I get, I'm not going to probably be popular about that, but I don't care. I really don't. I'm going to vote for the way that I think is best for the future of this country. And I mean this entire country. And to me, getting rid of income tax is more important than a national sales tax. A national sales tax and or tariffs would be a much better thing, I think, in general, because it is more even. What happens when rich people avoid income tax? They don't pay federal income tax. What happens when rich people buy expensive stuff? Well, if there was a federal sales tax, they would have to pay federal sales tax. So if you want rich people to pay more in taxes, a sales tax is a better way to do it than an income tax that they have all of the lobbying and the loopholes or laws built into it where they can get out of paying it. I don't know. Seems pretty reasonable to me. But thank you to those of you that made it to the end of this video. I greatly appreciate your support. If you're looking for other ways to support the channel, please check out the links down in the description below. And if you're looking for a free way to support, please like the video, leave a comment on the video, share the video with friends and family, or subscribe to the channel. All of these options are free, and all of them help the channel and the algorithm. So please do at least one, if not all of them, I would greatly appreciate it. If anyone has a topic or a song they want to see reacted to or discussed on the channel, please make sure you leave it in a comment below and I will get to it as soon as I can. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Take care of yourselves and God bless. Go ahead and check out one of the links on the screen now to either subscribe to the channel and see the rest of the videos of the channel or one of the carefully selected videos that you may wish to see that YouTube has used its algorithm to select for you.